So if you were confused as to why there was a graveyard of the subterranean people's bodies underneath the Monster Association, well, you're completely justified. So in this video, I'm going to explain why they're there, why they're dead, and the origin of this concept. And it's all pretty fascinating, actually, and it goes much deeper than what you think. So at the end of Chapter 99, when Child Emperor falls into the ravine underneath the Monster Association, it is revealed that there is a graveyard of the subterranean corpses. And yes, these are the very same subterraneans that we see in Chapter 4 of the manga or Episode 1 of the anime. And let me just clarify it so not to confuse anyone. These are the ones based in reality and not the ones based in Saitama's dream. They are fictional. I mean, you know, they're already fictional, but they're fictional in a fictional story. <laughs> but even before we see the corpses, we get a huge reveal slash easter egg of the subterraneans somehow being tied to the Monster Association. And I'm referring to the mural that we see in the background of the panel where Child Emperor is using his booster punch on Phoenix Man. So in this mural, we see none other than the subterranean king. And yes, this is the very same subterranean king, just like the other subterraneans from chapter 4 slash episode 1 of the anime. So the mural along with the graveyard is revealing to us that the Monster Association base was constructed and lived in originally by the subterraneans. And this was actually already alluded to by Hellfire and Gale back in Chapter 95 when they moved their fight with Flashy Flash to the ravine. When Gale goes on to say, what do you think of this place? We took it from the monsters by force. So I don't know about you guys, but when I originally read this panel, I assumed that Gale was referring to just other monsters from the Monster Association. Like maybe they were using this place to hang out and they just went down there and off them and claimed it for themselves. But no, it turns out they were actually talking about about the subterraneans all along, so bravo. And this actually gives the subterraneans some motivation to come to the surface back in chapter four, as they were forced out and they didn't have a home anymore, so they tried to claim the surface, but you know, Saitama. So this whole reveal fuels so many other elements of the story, and it already fuels what I just talked about with giving them motivation to come to the surface, but it also clears up what the actual Monster Association base is, because when we saw this thing, you know, we all saw it was gigantic and massive. I don't know about you guys, but I was like, when did they make this? And where the hell did it come from? Did they build it themselves? Did Giro Giro do it? But it also ties together one more storyline, and that is Elder Centipede. So if we go back to the mural of the subterranean king, we'll see that there are two huge centipedes behind him, and these are none other than Elder Centipede. Or at least one of them is Elder Centipede. I'm not sure what the other one is. Maybe that is alluding to another bigger, older centipede being out there. Maybe Ancient Centipede. You know, that's a whole other topic for another time, but let's just put that on the table. But like I said, it ties together Elder Centipede and how he must have met Giro Giro and Orochi. Because we can assume that Orochi probably played a large part in slaughtering all of these subterraneans. I mean, it's also mentioned by Hellfire and Gale that they did, but uh, Orochi likely played a big part too, and I'll get into why that is later. So we know that Elder Centipede comes from underground. We've seen him do it in his entrance into the story, and we've also known that that's how he escaped from Blast. And as the mural indicates, he likely lived with the subterraneans. So after Orochi and whoever else slayed all the subterraneans, they inevitably encountered Elder Centipede. And it's at this point we can assume they were like, there's no need to kill this dude, he's super powerful, let's bring him over to our side. And this is where they use their negotiation tactic of saying, hey, you can get your revenge on Blast if you join up with us. Because we know that that is Elder Centipede's motivation for joining the Monster Association in the first place. So now that we have all of this cleared up, let's go to the origin of this storyline, because believe it or not, this was not planned from the beginning. So let us go back to one of Murata's live streams from June of earlier this year. When he was talking to the chat, he went on to say, This pipe thingy that looks like stacked up plates on a sushi conveyor belt is the underground design of the Monster Association base. And I'm not going to read this next portion because it's a massive spoiler. But then he says, I'm thinking of drawing it like an ant nest or tower shaped. There will be ant monsters anyway. Let's just assume they made the base. But it is difficult to explain why it is in the shape of a tower. And then someone in the chat says, let's assume they snatched it up from the subterranean people. 
and Murata responded with, that's a great idea. Since they have Orochi on their side, they could do whatever they wish. Let's add a mummy of the Subterranean King. It could be quite shocking. And I was actually in this stream when this conversation happened, and I thought, wow, that is a freaking great idea. But little did we know that he actually went on to talk to one about this, and they both agreed that, yeah, it is a great idea. Let's add this to the story. So there you go. This whole awesome storyline bolstering concept is coming from none other than a fan. Wow. So that's pretty much it for the video today, guys. Let me know what you think about all this. I think this is pretty fantastic, and it just brings One Punch Man and all the fans together even more than it already did. I mean, this is pretty unique in my opinion. I mean, I know other battle animals. storylines have come from fan suggestions but this is in my opinion taking it to the next level uh, so if you like the video please give it a like 
I also have a Patreon. It's only $2, and it gives you access to a weekly Q&A that I do on this channel. And if you haven't already, please subscribe as well. Have a great day, everyone. I'll see you.